everyone, and welcome to CX Connect, brought to you by SpeechTech, CRM, and Smart Customer Service, and our platinum sponsor, First Orion. I'm Bob Fernicke, so I'm the publisher of CRM Magazine, and I'll be the moderator for this broadcast. This is the final uh, event in our week-long virtual conference. It was actually our first virtual conference. Uh, we do live events. We've postponed that till 2022 this year. Uh, we also have done hundreds of lives, live virtual events since um, 1997, if you can believe that. Um, but this is our first virtual conference. So our uh, session today is titled, Your Customer Experience is Missing an Important Piece, the Phone Call. But first, we're going to watch a video and then come back and I'll take care of some housekeeping. The future of business calling is here with Engage Branded Call Display from First Orion. Let's face it, reaching customers can be difficult when they don't know who's calling. So would you rather send them a call that looks like this or like this? With Engage, customers see exactly who's calling and what the call is about. Banks can call customers to verify recent transactions. Airlines can reach travelers with updates to their itineraries. Food delivery services can update customers about changes to their orders. Insurance companies can quickly get more information about customer claims. Engage is enhanced caller information that helps consumers discern which calls to answer. When customers see graphic-rich displays with your logo and information, it makes it easy to connect with them at exactly the right time, bringing your answer rates up and building lasting trust with your customers. Want to talk more about the future of business calling? Get the facts and request a demo at firstorion.com slash engage. All right. So um, you saw that brief message. You have a good idea of uh, what First Orion does and engage. Um, I just want to mention before we start that we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So if you do have any questions for our panelists, um, Kent Nichols and Sarah Hurst, please just type them into the question and answer box. If you just wanna chat with us or your fellow attendees, you can do that in the chat box. We just like to keep it separate just so that we can find the questions um, during the Q&A uh, session. And just for uh, sticking around to the Q&A section, you could win a $50 Amazon gift card and we'll announce the winner um, at the end of the presentation. So now I'd like to introduce our speakers today. We've got Kent Nichols. He is the Senior Solutions Architect at First Orion and Sarah Hurst, Senior Client uh, Success Manager at First Orion. Welcome to the broadcast, guys. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much for um, introducing us. All right, well, um, I'm Sarah Hurst and I am the Senior uh, Client Success Manager for First Orion, which means I work with a lot of companies um, you know, to make sure that their brand is displaying the way we want it to display, making sure that everything um, that everything goes smoothly with their accounts. Um, and Ken Nicholas does a lot of our data analytics. And um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and, and present to you. All right, um, as most of you know, outbound call centers and companies are really struggling right now with getting people to answer the phone. The phone. Um, we did a survey and we looked at and asked a lot of people, you know, do you answer your phone if you don't know who is calling? And about 87% of the people admitted that they don't answer because they don't know who's calling and they're worried that it could be a scammer. And only about 10% of all users have caller ID. So, you know, more than likely people are not seeing who's calling, right? Uh, and something that we've also noticed with a lot of businesses is that they use uh, lead generation on their website landing pages. You know, if you're wanting to know an estimate for a moving truck or you're wanting to get an estimate for an insurance policy, you're putting all your information and you're putting your phone number in, but the moment that person calls you, it might not be the right time when they are calling or you don't know who it is, so you're not answering the phone. That means that a lot of these companies are losing a lot of money because of it. All right, um, back to our survey, you know, we looked into it and a lot of customers that have missed important calls, you know, 
about 60% was to insurance providers, 66% was to a bank or a financial institution, which means, you know, if your credit card got compromised or there was an issue with your bank account, you know, 66% of the people missed that call. And it was a very important call. 62% missed their food delivery service, you know, which meant their food was delivered late or maybe it was not the right order. Um, so these are really high percentages, right? Um, and then we also asked customers if they would switch providers for a company who could clearly identify the calls. And as you can see, it's a really high percentage 57% for insurance providers and 70% for uh, bank or financial institutions. Okay, so this is why for us as First Orion, our core solutions is are really to empower people to answer the phone again and to trust the phone. Um, not only we have call protection, but we also have our call enhancement suite, right? And um, this enables customers to know who's calling and why they're calling. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have two different images. We have our engaged solution, which shows rich branding for your company. And this is something that you can, um, your company can design and create, and you can put any messaging in it and the customer will know why you're calling. For example, you know, you're calling about a customer survey or your deliveries here, or you have a, an appointment and you know your doctor's calling you, it's a great example of like, why would you use Engage? And then we also have our other product, which is Inform, where you can still brand your calls, but it will just show the name. For, for example, here it says, good contact. All right. So, uh, now we're going to move into more of our metrics, but with our call enhancement suite, you know, it is tailored for business clients and that's just the beginning for, for you to see the branding. Uh, we also have analytics that we provide to our customers, which is what Ken will talk about. So we make sure that your call performance is at its highest and we'll work with you to improve your um, call practices. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate that. Um, so Sarah mentioned Kent Nicholas, and I work mostly on the analytics side, reporting, working with Sarah and the client success team, as well as sales, just trying to help everybody understand some of this data. And so first, Orion, we have a, a fair amount of data that we can actually leverage for this. So being able to brand the call is one thing, but also being able to understand, well, what's the impact of that? What's, what's the value from an ROI perspective of leveraging this product? And so we're able to use different types of uh, variables out there. The, the primary one is call disposition. And for us just being able to know if that call was answered by a human, if it went to voicemail, busy, um, and even a, another KPI out there is whether or not the call was declined. So those are two of the main KPIs that we really want to try and work with. We want to enhance answer rates and we want to hopefully decrease decline rates because that person knows exactly who's calling. So those are kind of the basic ones. And a lot of times they pop really well for clients, but sometimes your answer rates may be a little bit flat, but there's other data that really is probably even more valuable. And so for answered phone calls, we start looking into the call duration or the actual talk time of that call, the start and end from uh, when, when the call was answered to, to when it uh, hung up. And that call duration metric can be very valuable. So what we found is that Calls lasting 10 seconds or less, for the most part, um, they're really not much better, better than an unanswered call. There's some use cases where short duration calls are very important, but for the most part, we tend to look at calls that last for a minute or two minutes or longer as what we call a successful call. So we couple that with our answer rate information, and now we start to have a pretty good view of what sort of impact have we had as far as not only uh, the answer rates, but also being able to hopefully have the um, display out there so it gets the people knowing who it is. And yes, I wanna take this call at this point in time and I'll have a interactive, an interaction with them. Um, we also have access to the called number, but not the true raw called number, just because we are very CPNI compliant. Um, we don't wanna have that A number, B number, date, of, uh, date time of call and call disposition metrics available. 
So we hash that B number in, in a way that we cannot get back to it. But what it allows us to do then is create some additional metrics. So the first one is looking at the total number of unique phone numbers that were called, and that's reach basically. So it's great to know how many calls you, that were made, but it's even more important to know, okay, I got um, 100,000 leads and, and that's the book of business that I have to work through right now. Um, and from there, then we can go through and look at contact rates and contact rate in our vernacular is um, any individual that answers at least one phone call. And taking that even a step further is to be able to look at um, answered calls, uh, an individual that answers at least one call and has a successful interaction. So those are kind of the, the major KPIs. There's a lot of different offshoots from there, being able to look at first call answer rate, first call contact rate, some of those things. Um, but, but that's kind of the gist of the analytics that we start to work with and how we present that back to the client. So we've worked with a, a partner of ours, um, Balboa Digital, and they're, they're a great group of folks for us to work with. And so they did some analysis on their back end because one thing we don't have is the true conversion rate of this data, right? I can tell you if a call lasted for two minutes and that's a nice proxy to say that, yeah, it was most likely a successful outcome, but we really need clients to be able to share some of that conversion, actual conversion data to see what sort of an ROI they're getting. And Balboa did some, uh, some work with and for us. And so we were able to understand what sort of a lift we were getting in contact rates. So they looked at all the calls that were made. We were able to identify which ones we treated uh, with an uh, informer engage. And then from there, they're able to go through and, and figure out some of these metrics. So the contact rate there, we got an 18% lift in the actual contact rate. So that means out of that imaginary book of business of 100,000 individuals, they got an 18% increase on the ones that we had Brandon calling to. Yeah, and also to, to touch base on Balboa Digital, they're one of our customers um, who use lead generations on their website. And um, they have, they're a call center and one of a few of their customers are in the debt settlement um, space. And what they're wanting to do is, you know, get people, get people help on consolidating their debt, right? And um, their customers will go on the website, fill out a form and put their phone number in and, you know, Balboa Digital will call immediately upon receiving that lead to make sure that the customer is engaged. And if the person does not answer, they will call an hour after. And if not, you know, they'll call the next day. Uh, but if the customer does not recognize that number, you know, they won't answer the phone. And that's why they came to us. And as Ken said, you know, they, they are um they're using or engage or an informed solution so they have been able to see real results uh, from our products they've been on board for almost a year now um, and i'll let ken talk about the anal analysis that we did for them but, but also to note they've been a great partner where they shared their data so we can better analyze and better see their call performance thanks for that Appreciate that, sir. I kind of missed that piece. So just going back into some of the analytics, we talked about the lift in the contact rate. They also measured their first call uh, contact rate. And again, we saw about a 25% lift in what we were, uh, what we had with branded calling. Um, conversion rate, that's a huge one, right? 54% lift in conversion rate. And that is the true proof of what this does for ROI, you know, being able to have that sort of an outcome. And then the last one that isn't even on this slide is another one called the first call success rate. So out of all those individuals that they called, the very first time that they called someone, um, they got a, an increase in that success rate of 75%. So they went from about 6% without branded calling up to just shy of 11%. So it was a, it was a great return. And we continued to work with them and uh, provide them additional metrics. Yes, and something that they have shared with us too is after using Engage and Inform, they've seen better conversations. Uh, they've had a longer conversation with customers that are actually engaged and the customers that they do want to talk to because they're the customers that are actually purchasing. So their ROI has gone up because of Engage and Inform. All right. Perfect. Well, that's all we have. Uh, Bob, if, um, if we'd like to go to a Q&A now, that would be great. Okay, so um, just anybody who's got a question for Sarah or Kent, 
please type it into the question box and we'll get to it. So you just went over some fantastic uh, numbers. How long does it take to actually implement branded calling? It is really, really easy. Uh, as far as in form, it takes seconds, really. Um, all we need to know is, you know, what do you want your brand name to say when somebody uses the phone, when somebody calls, and uh, how long do you want the program to last? But it is really easy for us to get it set up. Same thing for Engage. We just need to work on what kind of messaging you want to show, but it is, it is very easy. It doesn't take much to implement. Yeah, it, and I'll just follow up with that. Sarah's correct. Um, with Inform, it is very push button turnkey, and we can have a program up and running in minutes. Uh, Engage, since there is rich contact, it definitely requires a little bit more um, behind the scenes work because, as you all know, anytime you're putting your brand out there, you're going to want your marketing team involved with how it looks, how everything's rendering to make sure that it's correct as well as there at most times is some API integration just in the way that that product actually works since it's going out to a specific mm -hmm. device. So a little bit heavier footprint with Engage. Most of our clients tend to start with Inform, mm -hmm. which basically is you know customizing that uh, CNAM response that's out there. Yes, but like Ken said, you know, as long as you have your messaging with Engage, it doesn't take long to implement. Okay, yeah. great. So um, just so we all understand, do, do customers need caller ID to have this work? How does that work? That, that is a great question. And in this case, no. So since we are basically in network, um, we are able to display this branded call, just talking about inform to every single user that, that we have access to. And right now that's about 95 to 100 million handsets. So we have a, a large footprint with uh, the Inform product and everybody gets it. It's not just subs to um, caller ID. And Engage, okay, and Engage is application-based, it's an app. And so that's just dependent upon um, how many apps are actually enabled with the Engage technology. And those can be either from our distribution partners. We also have clients with their own apps and they can integrate in with our SDK so that they basically have a customized view or approach just for their consumers. Okay, great, because that was my next question. Um, so if, if a client has their own metrics, how would you be able to, or would you be able to um, help measure their, you know, their, their specific metrics that they're looking at? Yeah, I, I love it when clients have their own metrics because it, it gives us a way to really come together and figure out that this is working correctly. So some of it sounds really easy, but as you guys are aware, it, it requires understanding which phone numbers were actually inform and or engage enabled and being able to subset that out so that we're looking to apples to apples. Because we may come back and say, hey, we're seeing an answer rate of 23% and the client's looking at it going, well, it's 45%. Um, there could be a difference in how things are performing across networks that we don't have access to. Okay, great. Um, here's a question from uh, um, someone in our audience. And the, uh, basically the question is, can you say, change the name easily um, if you decide to change it at a later time? Um, how's that work? That is really easy. We have a client portal, so you can you know, change your name as soon as you want it. Um, you can, or programs, you know, they're set to last a certain amount of time. So you can set them up to last a day, a week, a month, or you could just go ahead and change it up and change your name and um, and use a different branding name if that's what you want. But it, it takes a couple minutes. Yeah, and, and Sarah brings up a great point talking about programs. Um, you know, the, the data that we have out there we try to get as much hierarchy associated to each of the phone numbers as possible so that from a reporting perspective, we can really segment out the data. So for example, your client may have two or three different business units out there. So if you're a bank, you may have home loans, you might have uh, mortgage refi, banking services, customer service. Um, so each of those business units, and then within those business units, you may have additional programs as well. And so being able to categorize all of the phone numbers by each of those types of 
use cases basically allows us to really hone in on the the analytics um, so that we can dive in and say hey you might be getting a 20 percent answer rate overall but for this business unit in this use case your answer rate is 60 percent and we see that quite often when we look at um, some of these large enterprises okay great uh, you know, we, we've got the stir shaking coming up and someone actually just asked a question in the chat. And, and basically the question is, are scammers able to do this to show a company's name logo when they're scamming and phishing calls? Um, okay, yeah, so that's the question. Yeah, there was a little bit more to it, but basically how does this work to prevent people from scamming? Well, first and foremost, you know, we, we are also in the call protection um, area. We do offer that solution for the network that we're in. And because of our call printing uh, platform that we currently have, you know, we have different things that we see for any incoming calls. So, you know, Inform is our own proprietary solution. So no, no one can scam and form. And uh, I mean, would you, would you say with a call printing, you can't, you can't spoof a number if we've already had it with a form. Yeah. So if Sarah's right. Since we are in network and we're doing all the call analytics um, across the board for this network, we're able to identify through our patented call printing mm -hmm. technology if a call is being spoofed or not. And that basically mm -hmm. trumps what the inform response would be. Engage is a completely different animal since it's app based. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's an API integration with that. Whenever content is pushed out to the user's device, there's a time to live for that content, which basically ensures that it's not going to be spoofed or anything else. So you're right. It is a big differentiator in, in the way that it works. And it's not only like you said, there's a time to live, but it also has uh, a pairing where you would have to tell us which numbers you're calling. That way, you know, it's like a puzzle. It fits right in. And if, if you're trying to call a different number, it's not gonna show. Right. Okay, great. Uh, here's a question from Karen. And basically she says, uh, or she asks, does this solution also work with companies that have outbound callers that are using BYOD with bring your own device, mobile devices? Does it work with those type of uh, agents? Yeah, we have clients that um, are basically in this field and a client, one of the clients we have has probably about 10 or 11,000 numbers that we have under management with the Inform product mm -hmm. right now. So it, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. caveats to that, if it is a BYOD, um, you know, and you're making a call to Sarah, but maybe Sarah's your friend, she's going to see whatever this company branding is whenever you call her. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. uh, so here's, here's another question. Is, in, is uh, Engage or Inform a standalone uh, capability or does it require some integration with other telephony tools that are used by a client? Uh, sorry, only would be the only one that you would need. The customer would need to have the app. You know, uh, and we have it in different uh, distribution apps. And like we said, you know, if if your customers have your app, we could also integrate with your app, and that would be the way um, Engage would show. Inform, you don't need anything; um, it will just show within our network. Okay. okay. And here's another uh, question. I love these questions. Is it possible to have a call purpose note for the? brand customized, it's coming from Jason. I don't know if you can see the, the Q and A, but um, the question is, is it possible to have a call purpose note for the brand customized for different call from phone numbers in the organization, like a bank having a mortgage department, local branch uh, with a different purpose that uh, displays on the call? I think you mentioned this, Kent, but... Uh, um, definitely with the page that can be done. Um, it's very dynamic content so that it can be modified however um, somebody needs. And, and like Sarah was saying, during that push process where we say, hey, this, this phone number, this calling number wants to call this specific phone number. And here's a couple parameters for modification of the content. So it's very easy through the API. Inform, think of Inform basically as um, legacy C name almost right? 
Um, you can change the name all you want, but not really all that much dynamically. We're working on a way to make that more efficient to have dynamic CNAM, but um, it should be available shortly. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a question. Uh, okay. So here's a question from, I'm sorry, I'm just reading it quickly. So, uh, this company, it's Laura, um, has approximately 100 uh, employees across the board from sales to engineering to management. Is it customizable by department? Yes. Yes. So we can't, we have, um, you know, we have enterprises that have, you know, different departments within their enterprise and we can separate those and they can have their own programs. So that way, as Kent was saying on the reports, you can see, um, let's say the department is, um, you have delivery and you have in stores, right? So in stores will have different programs that they're using different phone numbers and then you have delivery that will be using different programs and different numbers so they can be completely different from each other and you can see them separately on the reports as well yep and i think maybe a good way to look at this too is let's just assume that it's us bank and they have several different uh, departments under there and so one might be us bank mortgage another one might be us bank refi and so it's easy to take those numbers, those A numbers, and classify them however you want, not only for reporting, but also for display. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, here's another question uh, related to just compatibility, I guess. What type of customer equipment do you work with, uh, i.e. Ring Central or traditional landlines? I, I, I think that's uh, kind of an integration. Does it, It's just agnostic or works with any phone number? If it's totally agnostic, we are mm -hmm. not in with any of the telco equipment mm -hmm. for this product. Yeah, it's all mobile too. Yep. Okay, is there any functionality outside the United States? For Engage, there is. Yeah. Um, we actually have an office in Dubai and that area is basically doing a lot of work um, with Engage. In form, since it is network-based, right now we're just domestic. Okay, great. Um, you know, I think we're pretty much out of audience questions. Let me just check the chat because some people have been typing into the chat. And I think I got all these uh, right now. So we're going to wrap things up a little, uh, a little early right now. Um, and um, we want to thank everyone that, that joined us today, everybody that uh, asked questions. And especially like to thank our speakers from First Orion and, and First Orion themselves, uh, Kent Nichols and Sarah Hurst. Um, and thanks for joining us and uh, have a great rest of the afternoon.